and so forth and so forth. And these triple junctions basically mark the place where three play boundaries meet in one point. So this is a triple junction. When plates move around, then triple junctions can also move around. And some of them are stable, and some of them are not stable. A very nice example is uh, the triple junctions in the Pacific Plate. So 180 million years ago, there was a large oceanic crust a large piece of oceanic crust, and in probably what was a rather large hotspot, we formed a new plate called the Pacific Plate. At that time, the Pacific Plate was very small, and it was bounded by these three triple junctions. And then, over time, 100 million years, the Pacific Plate grew. And the Pacific Plate grew because it was bounded on all sides by ridges. So on every side there was accretion, there was more material added to it. And then at a certain point there was a subduction zone here in the Northwest Pacific. At 60 million years this plate was larger. And then 20 million years ago there was uh, an additional component of subduction against the Northern American continent. So already you see that this simple idea of plates moving around is not enough to really understand plate tectonics. We have to understand these configurations. And I would like to illustrate that with the first movie of today, um, which is uh, put on the internet by Professor Atwater's uh, team. And it shows you the history of the uh, Pacific Plate and North America over the past 85 million years. So 85 million years ago, there were some older parts of the Pacific Plate. There were some, young, some younger parts. Here is the North American Plate. I think I have to click on it. And now, 65 million years ago, you can see that there has been a lot of changes. This plate here has been subducted. So on one side it is growing, on the other side it is disappearing. And the triple junction itself is also moving over the surface of the Earth. And now there is another very interesting point in the history of the Pacific Plate. At about 42 million years ago, this plate is split into two plates. Because the trench at this point will collide with the North American Plate. So 20 million years ago, there were two plates. In older times, there was just, was just one plate. So suddenly, you have formed two new triple junctions <coughs> at this plate boundary. And these the two plates become separate entities. And this is the situation today. This little mini plate here, which is in fact very important for Californian tectonics, used to be part of the plate which is now being subducted under South America. Okay? Another of these motions, notions, which are not so easily understood just from movies of where uh, the continents have been over time. 
And now let's zoom into this part here and look at it in a little bit more detail. So this is the moment when the ridge collides with the subduction zone and here in this region you form a strike slip fault, the San Andreas fault. The Pacific plate is moving in this direction and this is what is left over. And we will come back to the details of this movie in the last part of the lecture. Okay. So, let us now make a few very, very simple exercises. Um, first, we take one plate, A, and inside this plate, completely enclosed in this plate, there is a smaller plate B. And plate B has a shape of a triangle. And plate B is moving with respect to plate A. You always have to give the velocity of one plate with respect to the other with this little velocity. Well, what happens after a few million years? The plate has moved to the right and on the left side of it you open up space and it is filled up by melt which is coming up from the asthenosphere and it forms a new oceanic crust and on the other side plate must disappear so the plate is subducted under the big plate A. So the diagram is very simple here we get a ridge and here there are two trenches. Maybe an interesting notion that you have not realized before Subduction doesn't have to be perpendicular to the plate boundary. Subduction can also be like this, at an angle to the plate boundary. Okay. Now, if the velocity of plate B would be a little bit different, then of course we must get different plate boundaries. So, if the velocity is like this, then we still have a ridge here, but we have a trench here, and on this side it is now a transform boundary. If the velocity is exactly parallel to the boundary, then you get a transform. And if the velocity is like this, then you get a trench, but only one trench, and you get two ridges. So. So far, so good. Now, let's look at a little bit more complicated exercise. As I've uh, shown you, many of the ridges are connected by these transforms. And then they continue like this. So let's just consider a place like this on an ocean floor. We are looking at 30 million years ago Okay, these are the ridges here, this is the transform, this is the fracture zone which is now inactive, and then the ridge goes on. And what has been plotted here is the ages of the seafloor. So, 50 million years ago you formed this part, and on the other side that part, 40 million years ago you formed that and that, and now we are at 30 million years. And at this point, just to get your imagination going, we form two series of volcanoes on the seafloor. Or we put some kind of a marker here. And the question is, how will this configuration, how will this plate boundary look like at zero million years? So 30 million years after this point in time. The solution to this exercise is like this. Okay, This part of the plate was new, it 
was formed from 30 to 20, 20 to 10, 20 to 0. This part is also new. There is still a ridge in the middle, but both plates have become bigger because both plates have had accretion. And, of course, these markers here, this whole line of circles and also these little squares, the block of three, have always been on the same plate. So they don't move with respect to each other. But these three are, in fact, on the other plate. They remain at exactly the same place on the other plate, but with respect to the configuration originally, these three markers or volcanoes have moved away. And they are now separated by the ocean floor which was formed in that time. Okay? So what is very important to realize here is that there are two velocities. If I'm sitting on plate A and I'm looking at what is plate B doing, okay, so I'm sitting here at plate A and you are plate B and you are going away from me, then I can measure your velocity with respect to me. But between us, there is the trench, uh, the ridge, I'm sorry, between